Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com with another weekly video. This week we're going to put a root pass in a 6 inch Schedule 80 pipe coupon. This is in a 6G position. Very typical, very common test. It's the UA number 28, I believe. And uh, here are some of the specs on it uh, 35 degree bevel, plus or minus 5, 0 to 8th inch land, gaps 16th to an eighth, and 75 to 100 amps if you're using a 1 8th rod. Uh, for the root pass. Now that can be a problem sometimes a 75 to 100 amps because there are times depending on the size of the land and the size of the gap you might need closer to 70 and if they're going by the the specs that I read on the UA on the UA PDF you got to if it says 75 minimum you got to use 75 minimum so you're gonna have to adjust your amps to accordingly where you can use at least 75 amps with no problem. Now this this is the time to kind of gauge that when you're putting the tack welds on there. If you've got a good keyhole and it's not getting too big with you, then you know you're in pretty good shape. But if you're tacking and your keyhole is kind of getting out of control, then uh, you know you know you might need to turn it down, especially because you're tacking in the horizontal position and you're going to be kind of welding uh, sort of vertical uphill uh, coming off the bottom. So you kind of got to you kind of got to get an eye for how your tacks go in. For knowing uh, the heat because you're going to be welding on a strange machine if you're going to test somewhere and it's not going to be the same. Machines make a lot of difference. That's why pipeliners and rig welders are so particular about you know using their Lincoln SA200 versus a Trailblazer or something like that because the arc makes a big difference. You need to be able to adjust the arc and machines uh, have different characteristics and some of them will kind of let you adjust as you go by using a longer or shorter arc and it makes a huge difference on an open butt root pass. But anyway, uh, in, in any event, you'll want to you'll want to taper, uh, feather your tacks, grind them nice with a nice long feather on each end so that you can burn into them when you tie in and when you're coming off of them. When you light up on the tack, you need to be able to make a good a good transition. And that looks something something like that. Also, using a really thin grinding wheel, if something closes up with you, it'll let you stick it in there and open open the gap back up and get you out of a bind. And that was like a 1 16th wheel there. It works pretty good. Now, how you hold the electrode in the electrode holder is a big deal on a 6G, and this is kind of how I like to do it. I put it in there kind of facing down like that, and the reason is because it lets me twist my wrist as I, as I progress upward, and it keeps the rod angle the same. All I've got to do is gradually twist my wrist as I as I progress upward, and, and, it, and it keeps that rod angle pretty much aiming toward the center of the pipe, and that's kind of what you want to do in your mind's eye. And when you light up on a tack, the way I do it is I kind of long arc it to begin with and get that tack heated up, and then gradually tighten the arc up, and then when I get to the end, just jam it in there pretty tight and get that keyhole going. Now I've got the rod. I'm kind of scooping out metal as I as I go forward. I can kind of feel it. I can kind of feel it scooping out metal, and then I go back into the puddle and try to keep it pretty tight. And here I'm tying into a, a tack, and I'm kind of pushing that keyhole right into the tack, and then I'm going to come out on the land. I mean, on the bevel before I snap out of it. That's not always necessary. Some guys just trail out right on the middle of the tack. And here I'm lighting up again, long arc it a little bit, and then dive on in there, nice and close, get the keyhole going. Now this is a little bit wider gap here, so keyhole wants to uh, kind of open up a little bit. The, the, the puddle's not coming with me quite as much as it was like on that first tack that I made, but it's not out of hand either. It's definitely definitely uh, within within the limits, within the scope. And here, this is a little bit wider gap here, so I'm actually almost making a kind of a small oval shape, just kind of tying in both both walls. And we'll get on the other side in just a minute. That side's pretty much wrapped up. Other side, going to hold the stinger about the same way. It's just a little bit different, though, because that's the reason they give a 6G test, is you have to figure out different body positioning for both sides. It's one side's usually easier than the other for you, depending on if you're right or left handed but I've still got this, the electrode in there kind of backwards like that where I can twist my wrist and get a favorable angle on it. Now you keep an eye on your gap because it's going to want to be tighter or looser depending on how the weld 
draws and if you have a little bit wider gap you might want to bump your amperage down five or, or, or so and if it's a little tighter that's the time to bump it up a little bit. I kind of like the way that looks right there, the way that's going in. It's keyholing. I'm able to, to jam the rod in there pretty tight and kind of just scoop out metal and then you know it lets the it lets the puddle chill momentarily while I'm scooping out and keyholing but it's not out of control at all and I've got it sped up here so you can kind of see the wrist kind of twisting to keep the rod angle pretty much poking straight straight toward the middle of the pipe now this is a little hot right here the gap was a little wide You can handle some variation like that without having to stop and, and change your amperage, but only to an extent. And a lot of it depends on the the, uh, the type welding machine you're using. Now, for this section here, I showed I'm showing you this. This is this is on the ragged edge of being too hot, and I'm having to kind of make circles and come up on the come up on the walls of the pipe to kind of cool the puddle off. And fortunately, it's on the top. You can get away with a little of this on the top a lot easier than you can on the bottom. But now it's keyholing out quite big, and so I'm pushing that keyhole right into the tack. I'm just moving the keyhole along, so I'm making sure to, to burn in and completely fuse into the tack weld. And finally, it closes up right there. And I'll have to go a little bit further to keep from leaving like a, a crater hole in the root pass. But that does it for, for the root pass now. Well, like you saw, it was a little hot in places, a little, little heavy, a little wide probably, but uh, for the most part, it, it went in pretty much okay, and uh, hopefully, hopefully it gives somebody some help that's getting ready to go take this test. Uh, I guess up next will be uh, the 7018 fill and cap. That might take a couple of weeks to finally get around to doing all that, but meanwhile, we'll see you with something next week. Thanks for watching.